Hey guys, this is a quick review or overview of Tech Project 8. There's a few things in here that I think if I show you in advance, it'll make it a little easier for you on the end um, and help you avoid making little mistakes that would hurt. So let's take a look. Uh, first off, pick your object and pick your background photo. Two things. I don't recommend doing more than one pixel squid object. It's going to make life a little harder for you. Uh, we want to do really good work and doing really good work on more than one thing is going to take way too much time for this week. So pick one and then we're going to get in deep into that one thing and take a look at all the, all the components that make it work. Now, this project is intended to kind of set you up for Tech Project 9, the next one where we're going to create our own 3D objects. In this one, it's not really true 3D because we're just downloading an asset that's already made in 3D somewhere else. And we're bringing it into Photoshop with some of the um, AOVs or the extra assets or layers that come with it that allow us to composite it much more realistically and with better results than if we were just taking a photo and putting it into a photo. So that makes sense or not. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Let's jump into uh, what I have set up so far and take a look. So I went through and downloaded an image off Unsplash. It's this one, just a weird architectural photo that I found with, uh, you know, some colors, lighting, and some space to put something. It's kind of an empty space. That's the key here. I want to put something into it. Now you're going to need to uh, download and install or not download, but just you need to get the installed plugin for Pixel Squid into Photoshop. Um, watching this video, I should should have started with this, but if you haven't done any of the reading in ch this week's chapter, you haven't gone through the help pages on setting up Pixel Squid, then you're going to be kind of lost. So make sure you do that first. Go back and do that. Pause this video and then come back. But here, Pixel Squid, we've got. I'm signed in. I've got my light boxes here. I've got a few. Uh, so one for TP8 here, for example. If it's running slow or not working right, then it's probably needs to be reloaded. So just click on the little menu button and hit reload. Okay, let me go back to my light boxes here. And I have one for TP8. And I found a couple of uh, Star Wars spaceships that um, were free on the Pixel Scoop website. So I can pull them in here and take a look and let's drag this down. What I want to do is I want to make it look like this TIE fighter is in this room. So I'm going to alt drag on that. We'll just do a quick free transform and check on the positioning of this. Uh, you know, I think that's the size that I want. I want it to be kind of taking up the space, but I want a different angle. So let me rotate this around. Uh, I think maybe right there. And maybe a little more upward facing like that. Okay. I think that looks kind of like it's there. I can move it around out here on the artboard and, or on the canvas still and see where I want it to be. But I think kind of just centered in the middle there. Uh, so if I want to do that, then what I would do is make sure we're on high resolution. And I see this blue message that says subscribed for unwatermarked PNGs. First off, a PNG is not going to work. I got to get into the, all the layers inside of a smart object. Uh, watermarks, you know, whatever, that's beside the point. That's the first step that we need to get past. But the big deal is we need to download a smart object, and it's not giving me that option here. So that's not going to work. Let me just go ahead and delete this right away. Um, so that's the first thing you got to watch out for is what the content is, if it's going to let you use it or not. So let me go back here, and let's go into free. And if I click on some of these like this thing, you'll see that it's not a blue button there. It says embed smart object. That's what we got to have. So this guy, I could just use him. Let's go ahead and transform that. This little walker in there. Maybe rotate it around. and see if, if that's something we could use, then we could embed that smart object and, and go to town on the rest of the time. Having said that, there's a lot of objects that are free and that will work, but they don't work in the plugin for some reason. This is what's kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know if Pixel Squid just hasn't developed it enough, but um, we can get around it. Let me just get rid of this extra thing there. All right, so I don't actually want to use this. I want to use that TIE Fighter. So I'm going to go back to the Pixel Squid website and it is here. There we go. Okay. And I can see that there it is. 
um, I just need to rotate it back to where I had it on the other time. And it's going to download a layered PSD here. You can see that through the website, I can download it for free as a PSD. So let's do that. We'll save it. Going to unzip it. And All right, I got my PSD. I'm going to drag it over onto Photoshop now and just drop it out here. All right, and I can scale it right now. I can scale it later, but let's do it right now. I think I might have put it in the wrong rotation, but that's okay. We'll place it right out there. Let's turn this guy off. All right, now here's the thing. This is what you need to have for the assignment, either one. We can look at this walker that we dragged in. If I double click on it, you see ah, it said it was free. It gave me a smart object, but it didn't give me any layers in there. That's bad. We can't work with it like this. So it's going to take some trial and error to find an object that does have all the stuff that you need. So let's just delete that walker right now and focus on this TIE fighter. If I click on it now, you see there's a bunch of stuff inside the smart object. That's what's important. All that stuff down there, we need it. So make sure that you have all this content inside of there. So we'll get to work. Turn off the background. And let's put this in a view where it's a little easier to work with. Maybe we'll go window, arrange. This will help you a lot. Let's go tile vertically. You can tile it however you want to. But now what this does, when we're working with a smart object, it lets us see our changes more in real time and, and tell what they're going to do. So on the right-hand side, that's my smart object. On the left-hand side, that's my main PSD that contains the smart object, all right? Over here on the right-hand side, that's the contents of the smart object. So hopefully you follow me. Whenever I hit save, like now, Command or Control S to save that change where I hid the background, we'll see it pop up over on the other side pretty quick, all right? So I need to maybe place this guy wherever I think it's gonna look better. So flying in the air right there, sure. And looking at it now, I think that the shadow doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my smart object one, and let's just turn off the shadow and save again. Let's go over here. It updates and there's no shadow, right? Now, are we done? We got the place in the object. It's perfectly masked out. Looks like it's right there, right? Well, not quite. There's a few more things that we need to do to make this work. So let's jump back over into the assignment page and see that it says um, we want to take advantage of advanced compositing tools. So if we're just dropping it in there, that's not really an advanced thing. You need to use the depth maps, material selection, shine layers, and, and a lot more. So we're going to go through here. We're going to um, tweak all this stuff to make it look like it has accurate lighting, shadow scale, perspective, and reflections that match this scene. Okay. So how do we do that? First off, we're going to look into these individual groups of layers one after the other. First off, we got subject flat. Uh, that's the object itself. If I double click on it, what does it do? It just takes me into the object, which is a non-destructive way of working, packaging it into a smart object so that everything that we do is tucked away and is not going to mess with anything. All right. Next up, we have an advanced folder right here. Okay. And in that advanced folder, we have a few things. We have depth, which we'll get to in a second. But if you see that, it looks kind of like it's in fog right now. We'll play with that effect in a minute. There are selection areas, which this is going to be really useful. If we want to select just the glass in the front, you know, that magic wand tool that we make fun of all the time, it's actually really good for this kind of thing. If we render a 3D object out of a 3D program, it lets us do this material areas or parts of a 3D object. And then we can just use our magic wand let's say uh, non-contiguous and let's click on that green right there. And we just selected perfectly all the glass. And then we turn this off and we go edit all that glass on somewhere else with a smart with a uh, adjustment layer or whatever. And you know, we're golden. So those selection areas, don't forget that that's there. That's super useful stuff to have. Subject layers. This is where things start to get really interesting. All right, I'm going to turn on this subject layers. Let's get rid of that selection. And let's take a look at what's inside of there. We have a few things. Let's turn off our subject flat because the composite of all these 
curve, shine, reflection, lighting, face, and so on. Those are all things that are going to be uh, contributing to the final result. And that's really where our advanced compositing is going to take place. So to see what those are, let's double click on one of those, like the base, for example. That is the base. Those are the pixels that make up this object. It's base layer with no extra illumination, reflections, or anything. If we go into lighting, this is a layer that that's where the lights hit. That's only where the lights hit. Okay, so if we want to tweak the way the lights look on this, this is the layer we would do it in. All right, we've got a reflection layer, and those are the reflective surfaces of that object or things where there are reflections being made. Shine, similar to reflections, things that are shiny. Things that are shiny are usually things that make reflections, so we can, we can tinker around with that. But let's take a look at how this works now. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make the lighting on the, the spaceship, the TIE fighter, match the lighting in that space. So to do that, I need to evaluate it. Let's go ahead and go back into my main object here. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool keyboard shortcuts, just I, and we're going to sample this color and see what it looks like. So I'm going to click on the background layer. Let's click on, uh, you know, some of this color up here. This is, I'm assuming that this is white material up here and up in the light fixture. And I don't want to click on the pure white. I want to click on the one that's a little darker, like right there, just so we can see what the color cast is. And so it looks pretty white, but it's actually a little bit in that kind of uh, a teal area. Um, maybe a little bit blue green, a little past cyan. So that's the color cast that we're working with on our lighting. All right, now that's just informational, but I can, um, I'm gonna just copy that hex value. Let's go copy and just cancel. We don't need to use that for anything. And I'll go back into this guy right here. Now in my TIE fighter, uh, in that smart object, click on it. Let's look at the lighting. Open that up. Now in here, we can make some changes in here, but now notice, notice we're on just a regular background layer. It's not a smart object anymore. So we don't want to edit this. Plus, if we did, that's going to mean that all of our edits when we're looking at the smart object are buried inside other smart objects. That's not a good way to work. So let's go ahead and in our lighting layer, that's the one we want to tinker with. We're just going to put an adjustment over the top of it. And we're going to do, um, this is really heavy handed and, and simple, but solid color. Okay, and what solid color should we add? Maybe this one, but I'm gonna add just a little more of that color in it by dragging it to the right so I get more saturation. I hit okay. So we've got a solid color over the top of that and it's just clipped to the object, uh, but overall the whole object, which is not what we want. We want it to go into just the areas where there's lighting, right? So it looks like the lighting is coming from up above. So what we do, we just go here and we can say clipping mask, create a clipping mask, All right? And that isolates it just onto those parts. Now still, it definitely doesn't look realistic. Um, so maybe a blend mode. Let's go in here and play with some of our blend modes and see if we can get one of those. It's going to add a little bit of that lighting color cast on top. Uh, I think maybe a uh, down here in this group overlay. Soft light. Yeah, I think soft light, you know, you can try out different ones, but I think soft light is going to work good for me. Um, I haven't applied the change. I had not save it all yet because I want to I want to see the before and after with some of that. But right now I can tell maybe a little tone down. Let's bring the opacity down on that a little bit and just hit control S. That and watch over here on the left. All right, we see we got a little bit of that blue color cast kind of coming in there. If it's too much, that's okay. We can just bring the opacity down or we can play with a different way of making that adjustment, like with the hue saturation or something else. Now the walls, these orange walls in here, they're kind of going to give maybe an orange reflection color cast onto that, uh, a little spill onto the TIE fighter as well. So let's sample that color. I'm just going to click here on those orange walls and come back over here. And I might decide to put that over the, the base area or the reflection area. Let's let's do it over the base. Uh, this time, let's go into our adjustments and let's try doing a something a little more advanced. Let's do a gradient map. Okay, gradient maps are really interesting. Um, 
not the topic of this video, but just so you can see, we can use a mixture of different things to do this stuff. Let me move that out of the way. All right, here's our gradient map. We're going to edit this gradient map. We're going to choose some stops for the colors. So let's go in there and um, sample this color right here. Hit OK. And that's the blacks. Basically, we're replacing blacks with that over here, the whites. Let's click on that. And that's going to be uh, maybe, I don't know, some of this up here. Oh, I clicked on the wrong spot. Let's do the floor. That's kind of whitish. Hit OK. And how does this look on there? Pretty bad, right? <laughs> First off, let's go ahead and let's clip it again. And then let's tweak it some more. I don't think we did the right colors there. Let's swap the direction. What am I doing? I haven't done this in enough time. It's been too long. Let's play with those colors a little bit. What we want to do is add just a little hint of the wall reflection to the base color. So I, what I'm thinking is that should make it look like it's in the room a little bit better. Tone that down. We can play with this a bit. But um, regardless, I just want a little bit of it coming in there. And so that's where opacity comes in. It might be too much, zero. Uh, just I uh, into just like one percent, okay. And we'll toggle that on and off and see that it adds just a little bit of that orange cast in there, okay. So I save over on the left. We should see it update just a tad, a little bit more like it matches that color. Now there are lots of things that we need to still do in here. I'm not done by any means, but let's look at the background, not even the picture, and see that it's pretty pixelated. But also there's a lot of noise. There's grain. The object itself is grain free. It's made in 3D, so there's no grain. But if you look at the background next to it, there's lots of grain. Okay, so let's add some grain to this. And we're gonna do that in our main PSD over here. Uh, I'll show you one way of doing grain, and then I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna stop the recording and just let you guys figure this out and ask some questions. But uh, everything we do, we wanna do non-destructively. So there are many ways to add grain. We've got a smart object. We could just go in here and do a filter on a smart object and add some some noise on there but there's another way that i prefer it kind of separates out that grain and let's just apply it a little bit more precisely um, and that is to add a fill layer so i'm going to go ahead and just add a new blank layer we're going to go to fill it and the keyboard shortcut is um, shift f5 but you can find it under the edit menu too for the contents we can pick a color that we want but i want 50 percent gray because this is the trick of making this work I don't know why my camera keeps turning off, but <laughs> well, um, we're going to do it with, uh, we'll leave no blend mode right now, just so you see how it works. But hit OK, 50% gray. It's going to fill that with 50% gray, right? I actually don't need my smart object open for this, but we've got our gray layer. I want to right click on that and create a clipping mask. Why mask things out if you can just make a clipping mask that does it for you, right? Now, this is going to just make it overlay 50% gray over that thing. And when we do that, that lets us use math. Blend modes are math. And if we use the overlay blend mode, what it's doing is it's saying blend things depending on if they are 50% brighter uh, above the 50% or below the 50% mark of brightness compared to the underlying image. In this case, that means that that layer one becomes invisible because it's right at 50%. All right, so the change that's gonna happen now is if we add 50, if we add any differences to this mask, then it's going to blend with the layer underneath it. So let's convert it to a smart object at this point. All right, it's a smart object, which lets us do um, non-destructive filters. So now we'll go into our noise. Let's just add noise. And I'm gonna zoom in on this guy a little bit here. Maybe. Right there, do you see the, the grain on the tip of the wing there? Turn this preview on and off. See, we're adding some grain on there. And now the only issue is how much grain do we want? You know, 10%. That looks a little high. Uh, we can add uniform grain, which is a little bit more uh, smooth, more soft. 
we can make it have some color noise in it, which may look good in certain images, but I don't think it does in this one. You know, we could use color grain, but then we could put a black and white filter on that adjustment layer if we want to. It may give you a little bit different effect, but I'm just going to go with monochromatic uniform. And for this image, I think, I don't know, maybe a 10% or so probably would work. It might be too much, but again, it's non-destructive. We can just double click and go back in and add that in. So little things like that, bit by bit by bit by bit, these are going to get you to where it can kind of make it match more in the image. Um, now that I've gone through these steps, this is really like one tenth of what you should do on this particular image. So just take your time, look at reference photos, things like that, and see what would actually happen with light. There's a big thing missing so far in this. What is it? It's the shadow, right? Not having a shadow at all in this image definitely looks really weird. And so what I would do for this is probably just go back into the smart object. Uh, not that one, wrong one. Let's go into the TIE Fighter smart object. And this shadow down below, you know, it was a pretty accurate shadow kind of for the 3D lighting that was on this, which doesn't really match the room, but that's a different matter. I could take this and drag it over into my other one. Let's just take it out here and put it in here. So now we have this shadow. Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> okay, don't do it that way. Do it another way. I'm running out of time here. I don't want to keep going because I'll just be like, and then this, and then this, and then this, and, and you won't get as much out of it as if you experiment. But look for shadows, look for reflections, look for color casts, look for ways to make lighting match, grain and noise, all those kind of things. The, the points that you'll earn on this is all going to come from what you do in this advanced subject panel, these advanced uh, folder right here. So definitely go beyond the basic stuff. Look for editing individual materials. Let's say you want your TIE fighter to have hot pink paint job. You know, it's a Barbie TIE fighter. And so it's going to be all, all painted pink. How would you do that? You know, can you go into the base color here and could you turn that pink? Would that do the trick? Experiment and try things out. And I want you guys to um, do some cool stuff that you're proud of here. So pick, pick images that are interesting to you and that you are interested in working on. And I look forward to seeing what you make. So see you guys later.